Hey guys, it's Angelo, and today we'll be going over quite a few upcoming changes to the Priest in World of Warcraft's upcoming patch 9.1, currently on the PTR. I'm not kidding when I say that there's quite a few changes on the horizon. A spell change to the Holy Priest that may see at least one Holy Priest, well, perhaps mandatory in any raid group, a huge nerf to the Discipline Priest right alongside it as well, and a slight nerf to the Shadow Priest, and quite a lot of new Soulbind traits for each Covenant. Now patch 9.1 brings other changes with it as well, like not needing any extra Soul Ash after the current requirements to craft the new legendary upgrades, at least as far as we know now, apparently there is going to be a new version of the Soul Ash coming, a new zone in the Maw of course with Corthia and other things, and I will leave a link in the description to all of those of course, but those won't be covered in this video. Now a quick bit of self advertisement before we start. I stream on Twitch at least twice a week typically and will be changing these days on the fly at the moment as there's a lot of PTR testing as well as a lot of Burning Crusade testing going on, but that will be happening over on Twitch, I will of course update you on that, so be sure to follow me there with the link in the description box below. If you want to join the discussion with everything Priest and World of Warcraft related, then be sure to join the Discord server with that link also in the description box down below. Now. With that being said, and without any further ado, let's go right ahead and have a look. Okay, as always, I will first read the patch notes to you before we then discuss them. We'll be discussing all new Soulbind traits first for all four covenants, starting off with the Venthyr. Nadia the Mistblade gets a slight nerf to familiar predicaments while getting the three new traits Fatal Flaw, Nimble Steps, and Sinful Preservation. Fatal Flaw is the damage increase trait here, giving you 20% increased crit or versatility after Euphoria ends for 10 seconds. Theodore gets It's Always Tea Time, Life is but an appetizer and party flavors, with or rather favors actually, with party favors being the major one here. Once per day you can speak to Theodore in Sinfall to obtain the Mad Duke's Tea, which increases your primary stat by 3% or your haste by 3%, or your Critical Strike or Versatility by 3% for one hour. Finally, we have General Draven bringing Battlefield Presence, Intimidation Tactics, and Regenerative Stone Skin with Battlefield Presence being the damage buff. Each nearby enemy trembles at your presence, increasing your damage and healing done by 1% and reducing damage taken by 1% up to a maximum of 3 enemies, so of course 3%. Now by the looks of it, you'll still be going with Nadia if you're a Venthyr for most situations, but only time and more tests of course will tell. Moving on, let's take a look at the Kyrian. Here we have Mechanicos getting a Effusive Anima Accelerator, Reactive Retrofitting and Soul Glow Spectrometer as new traits, with Soul Steel Clamps being also nerfed by 10% and Sparkling Drift Globe Core being nerfed as well. Mechanicos gets a, or rather two new damage traits, with Effusive Anima Accelerator dealing a Wii damage and Soul Glow Spectrometer increasing your single target damage by 1%, increasing by 1% every 3 seconds. Now, whether or not this will have a cap, that remains to be seen, but I'm pretty certain it will, else it may be quite strong for bosses. Pelagos gets better together, which increases your mastery. Newfound Resolve, giving you 12% of your primary stat and stamina for 15 seconds when it procs and you activate it, and Path of the Devoted, which is a damage reduction and movement speed increase. Finally, we have Clea, who gets Hope Springs Eternal, Light the Path, and Spear of the Archon. Of those three, Light of the Path seems, or rather Light the Path, seems the most interesting, but again, this does remain to be seen. Moving on to the Necrolord Covenant, we have a many getting Pustule Eruption, Resilient Stitching, Soul Sloth, and a nerf to Sulfuric Emission. Honestly, none of these traits seem overly powerful at all, so I don't really think there's a need to cover them specifically, as they're on screen for you to review anyways. Moving on, we have Bonesmith Hymir getting Carver's Eye, Mnemonic Equipment, and Waking Bone Pressplate with Carver's Eye giving you 199 mastery for 5 seconds, 
stacking up to 5 times whenever you damage an enemy that is above 90% health. Since you can only gain this benefit from a single target, this sounds strong for boss fights, but less so for AoE scenarios. Finally, we have Plague Divisor Merilith, giving Kevin's Oozling, Undulating Maneuvers and Vicious Trail. Kevin's Oozling is the damage oriented trait here, which summons a little Oozling to summon or rather to fight alongside you. Finally, let's move on to the Night Fae Covenant, where we have Nia gaining Bonded Hearts, Called Shot and Survivor's Rally. Bonded Hearts seems most interesting here, giving you 50% additional mastery from redirected anima from Grove Invigoration. Dreamweaver gets Cunning Dreams, Dream Delver and Waking Dreams, while last but not least, Hunt Captain Corain gets Hunt's Exhilaration, Vorkal Ambush and Wild Hunt Stratagem. Wild Hunt Stratagem does seem pretty promising, but whether or not it will turn out being strong for priests also remains to truly be seen. Now with all these soulbind changes out of the way, let's look at the interesting things coming directly to the class in patch 9.1, at least so far. Holy Priests get, as mentioned before, a huge buff to Symbol of Hope. It now bolsters the morale of all raid members within 40 yards, not just healers, and each of them recovers 60 seconds of cooldown on a major defensive ability, and regain 12% of missing mana over the course of 5 seconds. This ability does sound quite strong, and even though this may not see a Holy Priest must pick as a healer in the upcoming meta, it definitely bumps up the Holy Priest's overall strength by granting a lot of utility. Having a minute less cooldown on a shield wall, on a metamorphosis, on a dispersion, or other strong defensive abilities can make or break certain boss abilities and may allow for raid groups to actually skip the danger of certain mechanics completely. This is definitely an interesting buff to the Holy Priest and I personally believe that this should definitely see the spec picked and played much more frequently in the future. Be sure to let me know what you think in the comments down below. Ironically, the next change is also a buff to the Holy Priest, though this concerns the Discipline Priest entirely. Spirit Shell is getting its cooldown changed from 1 minute to 1.5 minutes, which is actually quite huge. Keep in mind that this cat already been nerfed recently, specifically Spirit Shell, and nerfing it once again for patch 9.1 takes away even more of the Discipline Priest's power. Whether or not this means that the disc will not be a must pick spec anymore in the future, well that of course remains to be seen, and is highly reliant on boss abilities in the Sanctum of Domination. This nerf will either make way for Rapture builds, along with Evangelism more intriguing in the future, and may just open up picking other legendaries in favor of Clarity of Will, which synergizes so well with Spiritual of course. The final nerf comes to the Shadow Priest and is in form of Dissonant Echoes, our potency conduit. It now deals 20% less damage, down from 35% of course previously. So it now actually deals 20% more with your Void Bolt rather than 35% more. This is a small nerf in total to be honest and won't really affect our change or current strengths and weaknesses at all. Now personally, I'm sure these won't be the only changes we will see for patch 9.1, as the Shadow Priest looks to be quite promising as a spec in the Sanctum of Domination with current scaling levels, so I'm honestly pretty sure a couple of things may still get nerfed. Whether this happens after more testing is done, or after the patch is live even, that of course remains to be seen. And that will conclude the first batch of important changes for the Priest for the upcoming patch 9.1. Let me know what you think about these changes so far. Are you excited for them? Do you think they'll be good for the class in general? Why or why not? Be sure to share your thoughts in the comment section below and as always, thank you everyone so much for watching. A special thanks to all of my supporters over on Patreon as well as all subscribers on Twitch, you guys are awesome and thank you all for your continuous support. Now, have a good one my friends, get excited for patch 9.1 and I will see you all in the next one.